Jules Vera going, going into game one. Just like that, we can see a lot of Akashi just like poking with tilts, down tilt, dash attack. Yeah. Definitely a little bit less comfortable in the air. A player like Penguin, but still making it work. A lot more just like grounded cloud to cover space, thunderline to prevent people from jumping in, keeping his aerial approaches safe with that constant threat. Very methodical. Ooh, Getting that yeah. kill extremely early. Koda just holding in on the fair, and it's a recipe for disaster with the up air. For sure. Great parry there. Oh, oh my god. If if Koda was a little bit further out, I think they would have just died from that. Yeah, oh boy. Great double, pin, great double pin there. Yeah, I think in a, a game that almost looked like it was just all Akashi. And starting to bring it back bit by bit. A lot of parries coming out from Akashi. Koda definitely tends to be a little bit of a buttons player, which of course isn't a bad thing. They mm -hmm. have an incredibly explosive punish game. But a lot of the times they'll overextend a little bit like that, and Akashi gets so much mileage. Just because Koda gets a little trigger happy going for clips yeah. like that. Yep, yeah, right as you say it, they are gone. It's, it's, it's the fallout to, to their play, but it can be a benefit when it works out, like we've seen with those B reverse howls. They just want to be cool. I don't blame mm -hmm. them. And it's been working. They've been cementing themselves guaranteed fourth here at Taps. Yeah. Just playing for style, having a good time, not taking it too seriously. But at the same time, Akashi has been getting a lot of parries, just catching Koda when they're being a little bit too... Oh, no. And that sucks. It's mispositioning and getting the down air. I think it's good that Koda's laughing it off a little bit. Yeah. I feel like a lot of that times that would shake someone, especially, you know, the first game of a set. You want to have a good first showing, and then you just dare at 27. But Koda's taking it well. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. I definitely see a lot of promise as a result, just seeing Goodbye. their reaction to that. They're, they're bobbing a little bit. I, yeah. think, I think they're going to be fine. For sure. Yeah, they're, they're being silly. I think Koda's mental is completely fine. Yeah. They do tend to be an emotional player, but I think they've felt confident just from winning Penguin. I mean, beating it's beating Penguin, not having super big expectations in after this, because it's like, you already did that. That's huge. Yeah, for not, sure. Not much pressure anymore. Just kind of live a little bit, have some fun with it. Not Just shake it off a little bit. And I think that's a really good thing going into this game, too. I can see Rockwall being a risky pick, as we've mentioned previously. Thin side blast zones. The top might be, like, average size, but with those platforms, it can feel really, really small. Yeah. And especially against a character like Abso, where if you DI in once against a fair, you just get up aired and die at, like, what was it, 70 in game one? But at the same time, Koda's incredibly refined punish game, their Sylph Blender combos could come into play a lot, forcing Kashi to DI in and getting making Koda setups a lot easier to land. Right. Yeah, a lot of Howl usage as a reset, Kashi just kind of staying in the corner, not approaching a lot with jump-ins, which is what the main usage of Howl is for, just to kind of catch you from landing. Not like Crackdown special. Really good catch there. Koda just crouching under that just to try and make sure they get the distance and realize they get hit by it, get the free parry. Right, yeah. Yeah, whole range Thunderline. It, it, it is a bracket setting, so it could work out, but if your opponent expects it, it can be really easy to catch. Yeah, Koda and just crouch. They just see the Thunderline immediately crouch, trying to yeah, recognize I, the low profile. I like the movement around all of Akashi's projectiles right there. But going to be catching that burrow. And while it is a lead for Koda, it is actually a full stock lead. Yeah. Yeah, Koda's looking really comfortable right now, but one or two neutral exchanges. Like, if Koda DI'd out there, I think would have been a couple kicks. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. the double pin, killing Akashi incredibly early. And just la yeah, laughing about that. <laughs> Again, these, these bears, like, they're going crazy with it. Koda's been on fire with it. Up air. 16%, single pin, air dodge to yeah. get the distance, double pin. Abs tries to jump there in the corner, but she has the floaty jump, like the mm -hmm. double jump cancel. She can't get out of there in time. Most other characters probably would have been able to jump air dodge. Yeah. Abs would not have been able to do that. Never. Go to take full advantage, takes game two. Both players are they're joking about it a little bit. <laughs> it's good to see that. They're not taking it too seriously. Mm. Kind of going with the flow here. Yeah. Going into game three, sticking with the matchup.
Got the line of bands here. Trupal, Abyss, and Tempest. Definitely see those being good Apsa stages. Like I mentioned, the T stages. Trupal, Spirit Tree, Tower, Treetop. Tempest kind of counts. Yeah. Tempest. It's, I guess, socially unacceptable in a lot of cases. But Do it. it is a good Apsa stage. We don't we don't see it very often, mm -hmm. but it's it's a good after stage. The, the T stage is coming into play, and like that, we're going to tower. Yeah, we see Kahashi come here a lot. Not at Poda all. out on that last one. I think they 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 realize holding in is just a death sentence. Yeah, it's interesting because I don't think this is a great soul stage, but I also feel like with Koda's play style of being a lot more like flashy and advantage state oriented, I can totally see it working out. Absolutely. Usually, uh, so we just want like a big open space to try and contest with, because a lot of platform might be counterintuitive, or other characters might use it more. Yeah. Especially when Koda wants to stay grounded, but being able to just take full advantage of that and press advantage as hard as they can, especially with setup like that bear pin to take out the first stock. Great reset there with the Howls, just trying to, they recognize they dropped the combo and then just trying to get another one out of it. Yeah. But Kashi just takes a quick fair up air. Spawning in force right now. Yeah, a lot of parries coming out from Akashi. Koda is very headstrong with their punishes, just wanting to just, you know, press, press the buttons, have a good time with it. Kashi yeah. does not want that at all. He is going to press that R button just to get Koda off. Relieve that pressure. Momentum's huge for a player like Koda. Or if they if they have the momentum, they are going to roll with it. And stopping that with a parry and being like, nope, you're not allowed to hit me is gigantic. Right. Koda's ton oh. of momentum right now. Double uh up the edge cancel. And anyway. a blunder like a blunder like a combo from theirs is incredibly deadly. For sure. Good time to burrow, just kind of recognizing, like, okay, I can skip this Cloud Bomb recovery yeah, completely. Yeah, the threat is just not even there, and then they go the full burrow, because Akashi wants to go for the down smash, maybe to catch, like, roll of the burrow at the ledge, mid burrow, but they just do the full burrow. Yeah. It gets rid of all the threat completely. And, uh, the edge guard from Akashi just slightly being off. And... I think Akashi's catching on to that full burrow length, putting the Cloud Bomb there to force them to go mid burrow. Really good adaptation on, their, on his part. Definitely. But... Is it going to be enough to salvage this game? Let's see here. That bear is not going to hit its mark. Great down tilt there. Kashi drifts out incredibly well to not get fared. Yeah, just throwing the seeds. But how? Ah. Kashi techs out just in time. I think Koda wanted to get a parry there to catch Akashi getting a little bit nervous dropping a combo. Yeah. And I can say that because that parry would have just immediately thrown the game in the other direction. Gosh, he's at a really, really high percent. Using that Thunder line to force Koda to not challenge, which makes his landing safe. Yeah. It, it's really good long-term conditioning if you think about it. But he's also at 189. At, at this point, Koda's just trying to kill with the down tilt. Yeah, I, I think Koda wants okay. to just end that. 203 after the hit. That's rough. Kind of just seeing. Getting to crotch cancel. Just kind of poke at that mid range. That cloud is barely whiffing well. Yeah, really good crouch there from Koda. Even if it like wasn't directly above, I think that recognition to be like, I'm just going to cry and crouch cancel this. I don't know if Kashi's going to put this on me. Mm -hmm. A big part of understanding playing against an Absa, at the very beginning of game one, you want to see where they're going to throw their clap. You don't want to try and go for parries immediately because they just couldn't do, might do that to bait you. But yeah. at the same time, trying to contest them or just being like, oh, they're going to just try and do this to bait me. You might get interrupted a lot with clap. What you want to do, like what Koda did there, is just crouch under it and just try and edge them out and see they kind of understand where they're going to put their clouds which you can be more confident in your cloud parries later on like we saw this said against Tapscon. yeah like personally i just when i'm um, playing against an abso all those crouch are at the start of game one yeah it's a lot safer you kind can of... see if they want to put it on you they can see if they want to put it in the air like to bait you and then you can kind of get an uh, idea of their cloud habits right ukashi drifts really really far there didn't die off the top I think that Koda just crouching under that cloud, not really sure if Akashi's going to put it on top of them or if they're going to put it behind them. And they, they made the right call there. Yeah. Because I'm not super confident. They haven't really edged out Akashi's cloud habits yet, even though we're a couple of games into the set. 
But it's better to be safe than sorry. You don't want to get parried and then just lose your stock because you don't want to parry and then have Akashi just kick you and kill you in like 70. Yeah. Because he baited you. Ooh, I think that was an attempt to try and just catch like a roll or a panic option getting stuck on the plat. Yeah. Kind of not... delay that, but Koda caught onto that and did a late parry, which was really smart. Not entirely sure what happened there, but either way. Uh, looks like Akashi's starting to bring this game back a bit. Oh, but... Oh, that worked out really well with the read, but Akashi just barely missed that. Yeah. We're getting the down strong. And Koda not being able to land their own down strong. Akashi in the lead now. A lot of these parries have been working out incredibly well for him in this set. Like we've mentioned, Koda tends to be a little trigger happy. Sometimes for their own, not for their own good, but yeah. it's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And you got to respect that. But it's been working out in Akashi's favor a lot, where he's been getting multiple parries per game because Koda wants to just reset, keep pressing buttons, hit you again, hit you again. And he's been catching up to that impatience. Really good adaptation on his part. Just yeah. like that, another just impatient move that Akashi's been parrying. Oh boy. That up air was just taking out the whole set. Yeah, somehow falling through with the up air. You can just, uh, Koda can just mix up his DI with it once. That is going to be the set, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think Kashi's been trying to just bait out some unsafe roll or parry habits that Koda tends to do yeah. when they get a little bit nervous, but... That was really smart. Scouting out the bear, not just going for it right away. Just like that. Kashi take. I mean, Koda takes game four, 3-1. Moving on to go play Giga Bowser. Yeah. They're Silvano's brethren, but they've both kind of drifted ways. I don't know the whole. There was a whole meme. It's like, why are mom and dad fighting? <laughs> because yeah. they were the the big Silvana Silvana Silvana's yeah. plural Silvana for a while. I like that. <laughs>